Welcome to Worksheet Cloud Grade 9 English. I hope that you've had a lovely start to your day and that you're going to carry on enjoying it as we go through the English lesson for today. My name is Mrs. Nortia. If you have not watched any lessons previously, now you know. And in case you have any queries, concerns, or some information maybe isn't quite clear to you during the lesson, please do feel free to contact as you see on the screen, grade nine at worksheetcloud.com. Right, let's get going. We're going to start off with a little motivation. And I know that we always hear, you know, self-motivate, find ways to motivate yourself. But sometimes the problem comes with staying motivated. It's quite easy to motivate yourself initially for maybe becoming fitter, becoming healthier. But what sometimes happens is then a week or two into it, we don't really know how to stay motivated. So just some tips. Um, I know a lot of people are doing online learning. Maybe this is just, I mean, learning at school. Just how do you stay motivated? So firstly, I think you need to remember motivation is internal. Don't look to an outside person or an outside source for motivation because you're the only person who knows why you want to achieve the goal. So keep in mind, you need to take control. I think also remember what motivates you. So why did you start this in the first place? Because if you stick to that thought, it will help you to continue. Challenge yourself with a daily goal. So set your long-term goal, I want to be healthier. And then maybe on the third day, you say, I want to drink one and a half liters of water. So set little goals that help get there because it will make it feel like every day you're winning. Motion creates emotion, right? So don't just sit around and wait to be motivated. You often have to go and find the motivation. Keep learning, right? So if you want to, again, I'm going with this eat healthier concept. If you want to eat healthier, then keep learning about it. Research articles on the internet and keep up to date with what's going on around your goal. Hang stars. Um, so find people who are positive and will encourage you. Maybe even some people who are on the same goal track as you. Lastly, reward yourself. So I think that's important. If you know you're working towards a little reward or something that's going to make you feel good, then keep those little rewards in mind. So those are just seven ways or seven reasons rather to stay motivated and ways in which you can try and yeah, keep going with whatever it is that you want to achieve. Okay, so for the lesson today, you will need pen and paper. Otherwise, you can also just watch this, um, a few interactive video activities. So you can watch and it gives you time to think about the answer. You don't have to write it down unless you would like some added notes. Okay, so today we are doing prepositions. Now, prepositions are pretty simple. You don't have loads of types of prepositions. Like, you know, you have all these pronouns and nouns. And there are small little words, on, below, about, from, in, up. There's a lot of prepositions. And once you know how to identify the preposition, all the other grammar rules around prepositions also become a lot easier. Let's watch an intro video. You can see it's called Meet the Preposition. And this just gives us a little bit of a, an intro and also into what the function positions are. Hey, grammarians, I want to talk about prepositions, but before I do, I'm going to draw you a little hamster. Is it a hamster? Is it a tiny bear? Who knows? We're just going to call it a hamster, a little, little rodent-type creature. Now I'm going to use this critter to establish what prepositions are and what they do, because in addition to there being a hamster, there's also going to be this, uh, this box. 
So what prepositions do is they establish relationships between stuff in place and time. So it can show it can show us where things are, when things are, and how things are. Let me let me demonstrate. So okay, so using just this hamster and this box, we can move this box around and talk about how the hamster relates to the box. Right? So right now, the box is under the hamster. Let's write that down. Right? The box is under the hamster. That word under is a preposition because it's establishing this relationship of where. It's connecting the box to the hamster. The box is under the hamster. But if I move it up like so, now we can say the box is over the hamster. But let's get rid of the box. And let's imagine that our hamster is having a midlife crisis. And our hamster decides it's going to go out and it's going to splurge on a fabulous new hat. It's an enormous top hat. A little band in the center. Just a big, old, silly, Abe Lincoln-style stovepipe top hat. Ding. Now, another use for prepositions is we can talk about when things are in relation to each other. So I could say before the hamster got the hat and after the hamster got the hat. Right? And, and these words after and before express relationships in time. But another interesting thing that prepositions can do is they can also help express how something is or how it's – what it's for, what its use is. You know, so we could say um, that, you know, this hat is for parties or is for wearing at parties. Oh, and at also is a preposition. This hat is for wearing at parties. So this is the, the how and this part is the where. So what's the purpose of the hat? Well, we established that with the word for. The hat is for wearing. And where is it supposed to be worn? At parties. That's the where. We can also use a word like of to express um, the, the how relationship. Um, and that's, that's just sort of to say what belongs to whom. So we could say, you know, that is the hat of the hamster. That is the hat of the hamster. So that's what prepositions are in the most basic sense. They can um, help you figure out what the relationship is between two things in time and space, you know, or, or how one thing relates to another. So you can figure out when, where, and how using prepositions. You can learn anything. David out. All right. So that was just a very entry level um, explanation of prepositions. And prepositions will always show you relationship or position between nouns or pronouns. So here is a long list and this doesn't even cover nearly all the prepositions. But it's maybe just to show you or mainly just to show you how you could use them. Um, just something I want to point out, a lot of people don't realize that with is a preposition. So if I had to say, I'm so fed up with the heat. So with is connecting me, I, I'm a pronoun, to the heat, which is a noun, and showing that I'm fed up with it. Um, yes, let's just pick anyone, dependent on. My pet is very dependent on my brother. So I'm connecting my pet and my brother with the preposition dependent. Here you can see for, of, to, from. Okay, we already said with. So here's in. Obviously, there's also on. So these are all different examples of prepositions. And as you read, or as you saw in the video, prepositions will be used to show relationship and when, where, and how. All right, so they're little words, almost like connectors. Remember, conjunctions connect full sentences, but prepositions connect nouns or pronouns within the sentence. Okay, let's see how you managed with taking in that information. This is an interactive quiz. As I said, you are welcome to write down answers or just simply watch. 
think about the answer and then when it comes on the screen, see if you got it. most of those right and um, it's always actively like that so that you can first think about it and then see if your answer was correct so I want to go over a textual editing rule with you textual editing as I've mentioned in previous um, parts of speech lessons it's about writing and writing so that you're not um, committing <laughs> sounds like a crime so you're not making any errors now sometimes you'll be faced with a decision again that sounds very serious of whether to use in or into or onto or on now it all revolves around movement if there is movement taking place in your sentence actual someone is moving jumping singing running 
you would use in to or on to. If there's no movement, then you would simply use in or on. Okay, let's watch this video of a cat. We'll decide what movement happened, and then we'll look at the different options. Just up of slow motion, dramatic scenes. Okay, so you can see that this cat is now walking towards, you'll see it's a table. And as cats like to do, they love to jump around. Now, this cat is going to jump on or onto the table. Is there motion? Have a look. Let's launch off into... Right, so there we go. The cat has jumped on the table. Jumped is movement, so I use on to. Once the cat is now, once it has jumped onto the table, I will then say the cat is on the table. No movement, so I can just use on. So when it's jumping on to, when it is just there, it is on. We'll do one more and we'll look at a dog so that we're getting to all the pet lovers here. So now we're looking at in and into. Shame, this is quite a fun though. It does look rather fun though. Okay, so what you will see here is a dog repeatedly running into a pile of leaves. Now, every time it runs, let's see, the dog is running into the pile of leaves because it's running, it's a movement. Once it's there, inside, you'll say the dog is in the pile of leaves. It's not moving, it's just there, it's in the pile. So yeah, the owners have given it wings. Okay, <laughs> so the dog is jumping into the pile of leaves. The dog is in the pile of leaves. I've made my point, but I almost just want you to see. Okay, it's close. Now you can actually just see the tail moving around. Okay, so there it's in, but I guess you could say it's moving into or moving inside of. And here comes our dog. All right, so always remember with prepositions, it is into and onto if there is movement. Another textual editing move is called yeah, the damping yeah. preposition. Prepositions may not end a sentence. In other words, they may not dangle at the end of a sentence. So all three of these sentences are incorrect. What are you talking about? Are you coming with? Where is that jersey from? You would think those are correct, but according to textual editing grammar, prepositions may not end a sentence. How do we fix them? Generally, you would move your preposition to the beginning. So not what are you talking about, about what are you talking. Sounds weird, I know, but it's the grammatical rule. Where is that jersey from? From where is that jersey? So like I said, those are easy when you move it to the beginning. With the word or the preposition with, you can just add on a pronoun or noun and then it will make sense. Not are you coming with, are you coming with us? Are you coming with me? Are you coming with your mom? So there you will see that with with, you can simply add on to complete your sentence. So you've now learned in terms of textual editing, the movement rule behind into, onto, in, and on. And you've now learned the dangling preposition rule. Let's wrap it up with one more activity to make sure that you have fully understood everything. Again, you may write down or you think about the answer and see if you were able to get it right.
that wraps up your knowledge of prepositions and you're able to say that you selected most, if not all, of the correct answers. Tying in just before I end off with the way I started it. In terms of motivation, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Keep your dreams alive, stay motivated and make sure you achieve your goals because that's the beauty of your future. All right, so whether you are doing or moving up, out, down, in, make sure you're doing it with motivation. Farewell. Thanks for watching Grade Nines. This lesson was brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. I look forward to seeing you again. Have a lovely day.